I said, okay, get your hands up. And he goes, no. I was like, I'll put it to you this way. I have never seen Tony Khan yawn. He strives to make everybody around him better. And it's also a challenge because if you do not keep up with him, he will leave you behind mm. as a lesson. I think Wardlow, like, but be, in a one-on-one -on -one singles, give us about 20 minutes yeah. and just let us wrestle. No cage, no, 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 you know, even a cold, I take a cold match with Wardlow. I just freaking love Sean Spears. Like, as a person, I love that guy. And I'm so excited for him and Cassie and the birth of their new baby boy, Austin. And man, just so many good things happening for them. But I know it's been a while since we've seen him in AEW and we get into all of that. We get into his new fatherhood and my pending fatherhood, which is now a month away. Jeez, that seems so real when you say it out loud, a month away. We get into all of that here. And we couldn't do any of this without NordVPN who sponsored this video and just always keeps me protected wherever I am, whether that's at home or it's on the road. I just love the peace of mind that NordVPN gives me when I use public Wi-Fi, knowing that my information is safe and not gonna be snatched up by hackers who are looking to do that kind of thing. And I know you've heard me talk about it before, but I love the fact that you can change your virtual location with just one click. You can go in there and access content from 59 different countries. So what do you spend on Netflix right now? Maybe it's the $6.99 package, $9.99. I think they've got another package that's 15, whatever, maybe a little bit more. For just like $3 and change a month, now you can like 10X or 100X the content that you can watch on Netflix because you can access the content all across the world. And the best part for wrestling fans is yes, you can access the WWE Network if you live in a location that doesn't have the WWE Network. So like here, for example, in America, you can only watch it on Peacock, but not anymore. With just one click using NordVPN, boom, we are watching the WWE Network like it's 2021 again. So head to nordvpn.com slash CVV and look at those words right there, a special offer for you, an exclusive deal where you buy NordVPN and you get extra months so you can be safer for longer. They've got plans right now that start at just 317 per month with four extra months Throw it in on top of that if you do a two year subscription plan. So jump on it now while this deal is still going on because it's only around for a limited time. Go to nordvpn.com to take advantage of that. And of course, Nord has their 30 day money back guarantee. So if for whatever reason, it's not for you, no worries, you can get your money back with their guarantee. All this is happening at nordvpn.com slash CVV. I love that it's on the screen right now. Big thank you to Nord for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into this with my friend, Sean Spears. Dad. Dad hey man. It's good to see you. Dude, thank you for doing this. And let's talk about this for a second. This setup is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. This, yeah, this is, our, uh, this is our Hollywood setup. Third wheel podcast studio here. Not bad. Dude. You know, good things happen to good people. It, this reinforces that for me. You, you know what I mean? You are living proof that good things happen to good people. Ah, oh, I got, I got the little boy. Yeah. I got, I got the wife. wife. I, I, it's, it's what more can a man ask for? So how different has dad life? Like how much has it changed you? So I have a lot of friends. I, I'm a little older. Like I had my child, what many people consider later in life. You know the deal when every, when you're growing up everybody you're supposed to get married and have a house and kids by 30. just kind of what society has thrown out there at least yeah. for me growing yeah. up so some people might say i'm a little late but uh, a lot of my friends have children and they've had kids for years now and they've given me so much advice and hey wait till this happens and wait till that happens and it's you can get all the advice in the world nothing prepares you for when you're holding your own uh -huh. then everything just you kind of forget everything that somebody had told you and then things kind of make sense, but they're not supposed to. And it's just, it's a, it's a whole new world and I'm still trying to figure it out. That's why I'm still trying to find the words for it, but it is the absolute greatest thing that I have ever done and will ever do in my life. We might have another or whatnot, but yeah. this is, that will be by far that my greatest achievement will be my children. Look, I'm right around the corner here. Right. How, am I, are we allowed to say how yeah, long? Are they, when is that? May 21st is the due date and it's a girl. So like, as we sit here right now, it's like, so a girl dad. Six, yeah. Six weeks away. Dude. 
I know. It feels like it was yesterday that you made the announcement and we were liking the post. Same for and we you. Were... Like, I cried watching Cassie's video. She put oh. that together. <laughs> she, I was upstairs playing video games. And she comes up, she goes, hey, can I post this? And I'm kind of, she asked me that, that about a lot of her photos. And I look at it and I'm start, and I start, the lip starts quivering. I'm like, did you just, the guy just made this downstairs. I go, uh, yeah, post this. Like she just whipped that up and just tugged on the heartstrings. But again, like you're going to, you're going to find those moments or where she's playing or where she's kicking around or you'll catch your wife and her playing mm -hmm. and you'll just record i'm getting all teary-eyed choking up thinking oh, about it man. but it and though and that's the stuff you'll remember and that's the stuff you'll think about every day the, this whole journey for me and i don't my daughter's not even here yet it's it's opened up this entirely different emotional side of me that crazy. i didn't know existed it is it is okay to cry it is okay to cry um funny thing i would have bet everything that i had on the fact that i was gonna have a girl I had this inkling. I knew I was going to be a, a girl dad. I was really looking forward to be a, uh, a girl dad. Um, a lot of my friends have little girls. So I was like, oh, I'm going to have a girl. And I'm so excited and, and everything. And I'm going to do her hair. And I'm going to screw up the ponytails and the dress. Yeah. Like I, I would have bet everything. And then we did a little reveal party at the house with some friends and family. And about oh, two weeks before we did the reveal party, she, she's like, I don't know. I think it's a boy. <laughs> I'm like, how do you just... Yeah, you're they, with me. They, they know right up until two weeks. It's a mother. It's, it's a amazing. mother thing. She's like, I don't know. There's things like, um, like if, uh, and I'm gonna screw them up if I even try. But there's certain things like if she has like an upset stomach on occasion, then he's got a lot of hair. Or like, there's little yeah things yeah. like that. And that the way they carry it, like higher and lower. Right. Yeah. So about two weeks out, she's like, it's it's I I think it's a boy, and she was a hundred percent right. Rachel knew from like she's like this is a girl. I'm like, really? You don't know. Come on. It's your it's first a, kid. It's a like, mother's instinct, man. I, thought, I had a moment where I got in my car. I was driving to go down here, actually, to do an interview. And I got into my car, and it just hit me, like, the realness of all of this. Mm -hmm. That I'm, at that point, was going to be a father in whatever it was, six months. And I just broke down, like, the happiest tears. Because things kind of make sense now. All of this, when you're running and gunning and hustling, and that's why I... You know, any chance I get to see you, whether it be here in LA, that's why. Like, I reached out as soon as I knew I was coming to LA for this week. I was like, Chris, hey, if you if you have some time, let's sit down, let's just talk. It's, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you, but yeah. like, you know, you're hustling too. You're running. You got things going on here. You got things going on in Vegas, and you know, when sometimes things are not at their best, or things are tough, or things are tight, and you're just like, what do what am I doing, or mm. how am I going to do this? Then something like a little boy or a little girl comes along mm -hmm. and you go, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. And now no matter what, that's the reason. So it's totally changed my perspective on life. It's changed my perspective on how I feel about wrestling. It changes everything career-wise for me. It's just no matter what, every time he smiles, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. You know? Yeah. It's it's You'll know it's, I'm so excited for you, man. I'm so You'll excited. be one of the first people I, I reach out to. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. How's Cassie doing? Wonderful. An incredible mother. Um, but just, uh, she is, he, I was a mama's boy growing up. He is 100% going to be a mama's boy. Them together, it just kills me. I could just sit back and watch them all day long. Uh, he just keeps getting heavier. So she's like, oh, shit. Because she's like literally shrunk right back down into her former uh, physique, which incredible athlete and in incredible shape. Yeah. Um, so then she's got to carry around a 12, 13 pound baby. And she's her like, arms oh. are going to be more jacked then. Right. She's yeah. got those triceps and delts going, but, uh, she's doing great. She's so happy to be a mom. She's, um, just an incredible woman. Uh, and we said it on the ride here. Like there's no, we've always, I think we've always known it, you know, growing up or, or at least we're, we're told but the hardest job in the world is being a mother yeah and it is uh 24 7 attentiveness it is all day love it is constant understanding like it's it's just different you know when you're flying and you're on the plane and there's kids crying and you're mm -hmm. like oh gosh i just want to sleep like i've literally when he, i've had him on my lap and he starts wailing crying for whatever reason I think it's the cutest thing in the world. So I start laughing, holding him, going, oh, and I start kissing his mouth as he's trying to scream. And she's like, can you cuddle him? But I'm so smitten that yeah. I'm just, I think it's adorable. 
Man. It's just different when it's yours. But uh, fatherhood looks good on you, man. It is. Uh, it's. What did you have the name picked out? way before no no uh we were kind of on the fence about a few names she had a list i never made a list uh, but she had a list and i x nayed a couple on the list i just didn't and i don't know uh we just kind of settled up on austin uh jay his middle name is jay and that's named after her brother um is he gonna be an aj uh yeah i don't like the i'm not i'm not good with short stuff I, i'll never call him aj uh -huh. um but I, I'm, I'm assuming growing up a lot of people will are you are you a Ronald? I am, man. Oh, you're, so you're, you're a short form. You're going to use my government name here on camera and stuff? <laughs> Come on, man. That's a quick way to Sorry, piss me Sean, off. No, Sean, yeah. No, no. I, yeah, no, I am, uh, I am a Ronald. But even I don't, like my mom just called me Ron, and I, oh, and my sister, Ron. Oh. So it's usually Ronnie, but yes, Ronald is it. He was never going to be a junior. That was never a consideration. Mm. Never, never a consideration. But you obviously know, you know, the name Austin has, you know, certain implications in the wrestling world. It does. It does. And at least uh, some pretty grand ones. Yeah. That's the case. Those are, those are some big boots to so, sell. So <laughs> massive ones. Uh, good luck, son. I tried. <laughs> so if you can pick up the ball, you know, go for it. Yeah. I, I think that people, you know, I, I love that name for a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's good. If it, if it could have been, a, if it was a girl, mm -hmm. you could have used the same name. We we had, oh, I don't know if I should say that. No, you might, you might, the next one might be a girl. If you have the next one, one might be a girl. And that. I'll say it. No, oh, okay. it, it might give me a try. I don't know, but we don't no, know. But if it's a boy, so we had Harley picked out if it was a girl. Mm, so a great that name. that one we had like set. Another wrestling name. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. Now that you're bringing it up again, big boots to fill. Those, yeah. So, wow, nice wow. little trend. What if your son one day wants to follow in your bootsteps? Oh, we thought about that. The or, chances or are passes. Chances are fairly good, and he's going to grow up, and he's going to see, and he's going to ask. Would he'd you have guys a pretty do? great wrestling trainer. So, and the good news, is I don't know if I'd train him immediately. Um, I, I would need to know how serious he is first. Hmm. I think because um, it can be very, it's different than it was back in the day trying to break in. But even when I broke in, um, you know, I got, I got roughed up quite a bit just to see if I would stick around. Uh, times are a little different, thank goodness. Um, and even at our school, like, we don't try and physically run you out of the, that's not what we're about. We yeah. teach you the professionalism that comes along with this. Um, but I have enough friends now that have schools or training facilities and things like that, that I would kind of, you know, I'd send them to TJ Wilson, you know, I'd send them to, depending on what he's doing. If he's not running the world by then Cody, I'd send him to Cody to see if, you know, because I know that A, he's in good hands and B, they'll push him mm. because I'll push him, yeah. but it's different. I'd rather him get a little bit of a hard shell first so that he's able to handle that pressure. How hard is it being away from him right now? It's the worst. This is the longest I've been away. And it's like two days? This is the second day. Yeah. This is the second day. I can't imagine how difficult that would be. And this is just a short trip to be you know, part of WrestleCon, right? WrestleCon? Yep. And then it's right back. Mm -hmm. What would it be like if you're back to the AEW schedule and it's two days every week, two or three days every week? It's gonna, it's, 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 it has to happen. Right. Yeah, so we daddy's got to go to work to quote go The to Rock work. from what? Fast and Furious. <laughs> daddy's got to go to work. Nice. That's not a bad. Yeah, yeah there you no, go. Uh, I, should, I think you should hit him with that next time you interview him again. He'll be like, get out of here. I don't know. I don't know. He might if you start off like that. I think you should surprise him. I should, I should be like, last time I saw you, I told you I was going to be a dad. Now I'm a dad. And daddy's got to go to work. I think he'll bite hook, line, and sinker on that one, brother. Try. He'll at least pop him. Try. Um <laughs> But uh, the hardest is going to be when he realizes that I'm going to work. Right now, he has no idea. But when he's able to like follow me to the door leaving mm -hmm. and he starts crying, that's mm -hmm. what's going to be the worst. And we all, as parents, we have to go through it. We have to explain. We have to go to work. Yeah. Like, like They don't understand until they do. Uh, but I remember uh, Dax Harwood, my, one of my closest friends, that was his hardest thing when he was traveling with WWE all the time. Yeah. Like Finley was you know, three, four, five. She was getting to that age where she would understand that daddy's leaving. And it broke her heart. And so it broke his heart. And he's yeah. like, oh, I just got to get home. I got to get home. So he's told me about it. I'm kind of trying to mentally prepare myself because, you know, they tell you it goes by quick and they grow up fast. So, but it's going to be, it's going to be tough. It's just a matter of time that you'll be back on the road with A&W. Uh, I hope. <laughs> I, 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 I hope. Um, I've tried. We've put some feelers out there and some ideas out there. It's just a matter of trying to get the wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. It was also, they've been very, very good. Um, last year was tough 
I lost my mom last yeah, August. So sorry. Thank you. Um, it, it, was, it was just, we kind of knew it was coming, but then it happened very suddenly. Yeah. Um, so that was tough. But at the same time, Cassie was five and a half, six months pregnant. So like, I'm expecting and losing at the same time. And then, you know, I'm in Florida and I'm trying to settle my mom's estate. She's and, in Canada. Yeah. All my family. I have no family here. Same. Just, yeah. so everybody's home and, um, you know, my family doesn't come from any money. They don't, we didn't have anything growing up. So it's just a matter of making sure everything is handled and taken care of. And my, my sister, my older sister, she's doing a lot of the running around and like basically a lot of them didn't have a chance to like mourn. I didn't have a chance to mourn because mm -hmm. I'm way over here and I'm not with them. And then you go home quick and then you have to get back to your wife and you're like, it's, it was just a lot. And AEW has been very good about kind of allowing me that time. Your speech that you gave in the ring talking about losing your mom, but then becoming a father, that, that got me, that got me good. That got, uh, that got me, uh, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I felt like I, I, I think I said it, I think I owed, I owed people an explanation. You know how that, that's the know. best promo you've ever cut. I, it's pr the most real one. <laughs> that's it, you for know, sure. It's the most, uh, real one. And I, I think it was because I was home and I think it was because I just, I felt like being honest and I was, you know, I've been playing pro wrestler for a very long time and it's mm -hmm. been great and it's been fun, but I'm at that point now where you know, I, I, I also, I care, but I don't care. So I'm just going to say what I want, say what I feel. And if people can gravitate towards it, wonderful. If people just want to toss it to the side, that's fine too. But I think more so than anything else, I'm just going to get back to being me. Did you tell them like, Hey, I, I want to, this is pretty personal for me. I want to share this with the audience. No. You just grabbed him. No, we were last. So uh, yeah. I think it was a six man tag and it was yep. rampage. So it was last match of the night. Um, uh, and FTR, a very hot tag team, very hot act, were out there. Right. And I think they kind of um, said their piece to the crowd. And then Dax had the microphone. He goes, I'm going to let the hometown boy talk. Yeah. And I went, oh, I should. I don't know exactly what I'm going to say, but yeah. I should probably just explain to them why I've been gone. And I keep a lot of stuff personal. Like, no one knows a lot about me. If people dig, it's really hard to find, like, my contract status. It's very hard to find... You know, if I'm injured or anything like that, I keep things very private. Yeah. Um, but I just felt like I owed them an explanation of being gone for so long. Mm -hmm. I'd been gone five months up until that time. Yeah. Which is weird because then I so showed up in Toronto, said what I said, and I was gone for another five months. <laughs> you owe us another explanation. So uh, yeah. you might see me again in another uh, five months. Yeah. So, um, but a very emotional night, a very, um, and the DMs that poured in, man, ooh, a lot of people just not only saying nice things and comforting things, but sharing their experiences. Like, hey, I just lost my uncle. I lost my dad last week, and going to this show was to help, help me take my mind off it. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And they're like, no, like, it's just nice to know that everybody feels the same yeah. pain and no matter what it like the reality is it doesn't go away yeah. it never goes away i think about my mom like driving on, on the way here i thought about her mm. i used to, i used to call her on the way to the school all the time like 25 minutes and we talk all the way there yeah. and sometimes every now and then if i'm not paying attention or if i'm in a hurry i'm getting ready to turn onto the highway and i push and i'm like oh, i can't i can't yeah. call her you know what i mean it's mm. stuff like that you go oh, that stuff will never go away. But I hope that you realize how far that you've come. Like, I remember watching you at, I think it was Blood, Sweat, and Ears. Was that? Oh, man. That? Is remember that B BSD? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Before wow. I moved to the States, I remember wow. watching you. <laughs> and it was kind of like a farewell match. Like, Sean Spears is going to go to WWE Developmental. And you were doing this at a time when not a lot of Canadian independent wrestlers were really getting discovered. The indie scene wasn't what it was then like it is now mm -hmm. so of course there was edge and there was christian and there's val Venus and test but like and you know obviously some other ones trish stratus but it's not like now where like you make a huge name for yourself on the indies draw a lot of attention because the internet is what it is mm -hmm. and then get signed so you were like way ahead of this curve i feel like it was a different time just like you were talking about like yeah. nowadays, God, it's wonderful to be a pro wrestling fan. It's wonderful to be a pro wrestler or valet manager, whatever you are. Yeah. It's a great time to be in the industry. Um, I got picked up when they, when you had to send in tapes and do submissions when they were coming to your area. So you'd send in a tape and if they liked what they saw, they would put you on a list. So they, I think my, my trial was in Buffalo. 
So they were coming to Buffalo and yeah. they said, yep, you're on the list. You're going to show up. And it was me and 30 other people. And it was a live event. We did a tryout there that like, that's just old school way of doing it things. It was like you and Tyson Dukes were like the big indie Canadian names that everyone went, they're going to, they're going to do something. Hopefully. Like it's always the, the hope you're hopeful. Yeah. But, it's but like, I, I was all, got a visa and everything. Right. But I was also surrounded by a lot of good talent and good people that weren't exactly, you know, really looking out for themselves. They were actually looking to help other people and mm -hmm. they did a great job at pulling me along. Guys like, like you say, Tyson, uh, Cody. Eric Young, I'd be remiss to not mention. He trained he me. Scene, he really, yeah. really trained me like start to finish, took me under his wing, took me to all of my first shows. Cody Diener was another guy that really took care of me. Derek Wilde was a guy that took care of me. I was just in good hands. Oh. So uh, luckily, and you know, when you're, when you have guys like that, you're still in touch with them to this day and they're still very close friends of mine. But when you have guys like that that are looking forward to, like, they're looking out for you, man. Like, it's just, if you're put on the right track and you keep your head down and nose to the, like, you know all this stuff. It's so true. You keep your nose to the ground. It will, it, if you do it long enough, you push long enough, it will pan out. Yeah. Some Somewhere somebody will cut you a yeah. break. It's just a matter of whether or not you stay in the ride long enough. I smile when you mention Derek Wilde because I interviewed Eric Young for the first time uh, when he got released from WWE, and I said, you wrestled my favorite indie match of all time. It's the pal driver through the table. <laughs> Lunatic. This is you, would, you would love that. It's, you would. It was their ladder match. It was Eric Eric Young and Derek so Wilde. It was in the falls. It was. It was at uh, Fighting Spirit Pro Wrestling. Yeah. And it's just funny that I said to Eric, like, you have my favorite ending match of all time. And that was the end of the sentence. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know. I know exactly what one you're talking about. Yeah. Just like I know the one yeah. you're just talking about. Yeah. Well, is that a legendary Ontario or Canadian wrestling, like, indie match? Uh, I, I think so. I would say so only because, like, and this is not a shot at anybody today or anything like that. But no one was really doing pile drivers off ladders because it was to the floor mm -hmm. through a table mm -hmm. outside the ring. There's and, a, I think you can see me in the background of that shot. I'm like third row going, oh. Oh yeah. my God. No one was doing that at that yeah. time. Like it was just, uh, it was wild stuff. I remember watching it. Like it might've been a little before I stopped, but I was like either a trainee or still a fan of wrestling. And I was just like, oh my God, like <laughs> that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, but it was wild at the time and it got a lot of buzz. I think back then it was just some internet Ontario indie message board stuff. And that's right. Yeah. And a lot of guys would just go on there and talk about kind of, you know, just morphed into everything that it is now today. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that was a big match back then that a lot of people like, put those two guys kind of yeah. in the upper echelon of yeah. indie talents. There isn't a week that goes by where someone doesn't send me some sort of a message or a tweet about the 20 chops I took at Flatbacks. Someone told me to do it to you again. Oh, somebody I can't take 20 from you. <laughs> somebody told me to chop you again. They're like, yeah, chop Van Bleet. And I was like, ah. Uh, uh. How often do people bring that up for you? Uh, a lot of times people, um, they say that um, they either saw Chris Danger's video yep. or they saw the 20 chop, they saw your video. Because my video between TikTok and YouTube Shorts and the full YouTube video, has something like 15 or massive. 20 million views. Massive. Yeah. Great advertisement for flatbacks. It is, but a lot of you see a lot of kids come in, they're like, so like, are we doing chop day? <laughs> and I was like, well, it depends. But like I think there's a, a little bit of a misconception. So this is perfect because you were there live. Yes. So the reason why we do chop day, um, the main reason is because you can actually feel a little bit of pain, a mm -hmm. slap mm -hmm. to the chest, which allows you to sell it gives you something to tap into mentally that okay so i know what this feels like i can sell this for real well i can sell a punch the same way i can sell a kick the same way it helps them if they're having a hard time coming out of their shell or making noise or selling yeah. it gives them a, a starting point right the other part is which you saw firsthand is that the camaraderie that it builds because in pro wrestling you know this like as much as anybody else you're trusting each other with your lives yeah i just met some of your guys today right here mm -hmm. helping out in the studio yeah. if they're pro wrestlers and i don't know them and we showed up today at a show and we're wrestling each other yeah. like that is a very that's a a reality i don't know how safe or dangerous this person is sure that's where professionalism comes in that's, yeah. that's why professional is in the whole <laughs> professional wrestling um but the camaraderie that it builds is is something to be seen so when you see a lot of these young kids come in they're 19 20 21 and they're shy and they're nervous and they're kind of scared and they're like i don't know what i'm doing but i just love wrestling and i just want to be here yeah and they're like hey man have some fun and smile and they go it's okay loosen up <laughs> okay <laughs> breathe <sighs> like you, there's just i remember what it was like sure. to be in that spot so 
once they hit chop day, it's like they just, oh, and, okay. And at what point during their training does chop day usually happen? It's kind of like uh, fourth or fifth week. Okay. You, usually it's it's farther it's yeah. farther in. So like hopefully they loosen up and they you know we give them time. Usually it's by the time we start doing matches, which yeah. is they start doing their first matches by about four or five weeks. Most people will comment that chop seventeen that I took and chop nineteen looked the worst. <laughs> And that was Breeze's <laughs> first chop and your first chop. Oh, it, it broke my heart, but you were a trooper that. And we had a big class that time too. Yeah. That was a big, that was a, I think I told you that before. I was like, this is a, a, a bigger class than usual, man. And we usually do two each. The, well, kids, the kids get two each to hit each other. And, and the, like, the whole plan was I trained when I was 20. Right? I didn't fully train, but I trained at the squared circle in Toronto. So I, I know how to bump and run the ropes, not well anymore but no you you ran them i i had the you know the basics down i could lock up right and you were like uh well what if i gave you a chop and i was like i'll take i'll take a chop like for sure it'd be a lot more interesting though and nobody <laughs> realizes this was my idea yeah. Yeah, i'm like that out for sure <laughs> yes it was my idea i said it'd be a lot more interesting if we lined up all your students and each one of them gave me a chop and you're like let's do it yeah. and then after I had already committed, you're like, oh, by the way, everybody gets two. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean? I'm, yeah. I immediately went, eight students, two teachers, 20? Yeah. Oh, what have I got myself into? And then next thing you know, you're like, take off your shirt and get in the corner. I was like, and coaches go last, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. you took him like a champ, man. I think around chop 12 or something, my chest just went numb. You made the wall. There's a picture of you on the wall in flatbacks, <laughs> sitting there, just look like... You oh, got it's bad. Clothesline by a giant <laughs> anaconda snake about 15 times. Just, just welts. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's kind of what it looked like. I hope that there is the at least one student that has come to you and said, I didn't even know there was a wrestling school in Central Florida. And then I saw that video. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, we've gotten the submissions. Hey, saw CVV's video. What? Um, just wow. want to know exactly what the course schedule is like. Yeah. What was the commission rate that we negotiated again? I can't remember. Shh. Oh, yeah. we, 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 yeah. uh, we'll talk to Breeze. I'll run, let me run out yeah, the ladder. Let yeah. me get an answer for you after. Figure that out. <laughs> you know, I got your back. It's Breeze you got to worry yeah, about. Yeah, right, right. How's he doing? He's fantastic. That guy's, uh, he's, I always tell him he's the smartest dumb person I know. Um, and I mean that in the most <laughs> loving way. But I, I wish I met that guy. I've known him for, oh God, 10 years now. But business partner, my best Real friend. Real estate mogul. Yeah, he's very smart. Very, uh, he's got multiple properties. He's got his fingers and everything. He still works. WWE, he's oh, in this, right. yeah, he's, yeah. he's in a yeah, different yeah. department. Like he's he's got the school going. He's he's got a lot going on for himself. Very happy, very healthy, and that's he's. Got, I keep bugging him now. I say, hey man, now you got to have a kid because my my kid needs a friend. Like, yeah, you're my only friend, so you got to. My kid needs a friend, and he's like, ah, oh, leave me alone. So, <laughs> but yeah, things things are very well. When a new student comes to you guys, what are you looking for? Heart. Hard. Our, our biggest thing is, uh, and I know that might sound a little cheesy, our biggest thing uh, that we harp on most is safety and uh, footwork technique. Because if you kind of get that down, then the danger levels kind of drop. But, um, like, man, just the, the will to not want to stop or not quit. Mm. It is so hard to uh, instill. And it was, uh, it was great because I was out last night a little bit in L.A. Um, uh, after we did the live with FTR. I went to the comedy store and I saw Ziggler yeah, and, and Ryan and yeah, the, so they were performing, but uh, the best part is I had like my kids out there. And when I say kids, I don't mean that they're children. I mean like the kids that I've trained. So like Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, uh, Kiana James in WWE, one half of the women's uh, NXT tag team, Harley yeah. Cameron, who's now with AEW. Like when you kind of stand back for a second, you look like you're, you're so, you're so proud. And then you kind of remember, you know, they were, sweating their guts out and basically dying during training and yeah. i'm in their ear i'm in their ear all of them you can quit if you want you can stop at any time you can take a break you want to go get some water go ahead and they refuse some of them even tell me you know, Fuck off. <laughs> like just but that's me going you don't know your limits yet mm. it's my job as a coach to find your limits so i'm going to push you towards them they're going to be uncomfortable but if you're able to break through those limits, not only will it help you in pro wrestling, it'll help you in life. You got to remember I'm getting young kids, right? So I, I, I push them because that's what they're paying me to do. Yeah. I don't push them to a point where they uh, completely fold mm -hmm. because they're still very impressionable. They're still very young, but they don't know their limits yet. Push yourself to find those limits. You might surprise yourself. 
you might surpass them. And, you know, if you get the ball rolling for there, like who knows what you're capable of? Yeah. It's a very powerful thing if you can kind of wrap your mind around it, but it takes a long time to wrap your mind around yeah. it unless you have someone in your ear saying, you can quit or you can keep going. Yeah. The choice is yours. I would think your quitting rate there is a lot lower than other wrestling schools because you have to make the commitment of going every day. And like for a lot of people moving to Florida to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think there's a lot of people that go to wrestling school on Tuesday night and then Thursday night, and then they don't go again for till next week. I would think your quitting rate's a lot lower. Uh, I don't, and I'm not sure. I have talked with like a few people, Cody and QT and stuff like that. And it's kind of the same. It seems like it's the same, at least between those two schools. Um, I think a lot of people underestimate how much cardiovascular conditioning that is required in pro wrestling. It blows me away how many people want to be pro wrestlers and don't go to the gym frequently. I'm that like, is part two. What are you doing? You have to pick people up. You have to work out. You have to be strong, not just to protect somebody else, but protect yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, once you start getting into getting hit and falling, um, usually in the past couple classes, this class actually hasn't. We haven't had any quitters yet, which is fantastic. Last couple classes, usually one or two that quit during the cardio week, which is the first week. Uh, once we get into bumps, usually one might fall out or one might get hurt mm -hmm. or one might sit out, depending on if they're legitimate injured or not. It's just it's up to them. But yeah. usually a couple are out. Yeah, because it's a it's not for everybody. But the same thing we tell them at the beginning of every eight week course, just you have eight weeks for the rest of your life. Yeah. And a couple of them live in my houses. Like we have student housing. So I put them in there. Yeah. So if you guys are coming from out of state and you have nothing else to do, you're not working here, you've already yeah. paid your fees, you're good. What are you doing with the other 21 hours mm -hmm. that you are not here? We have class three hours a night yeah. for the next eight weeks for the rest of your life. Find out if this is something for you. Yeah. That way you're not 70, 80 and go, I wonder if I would have, could I? Like, do you, do you know what I mean? Like that's of so, course. so vital. It's, it's, I think it's so important. So we make sure we make that clear on day one. I want to bring it back to what you said about Cody. Like if he's not running the world by then, he feel, it seems like he's just cut from a completely different cloth. He is, he is. And it's, uh, I get kind of choked up. I, I get emotional thinking about it now. I'm not going to cry because I'm not going to give him that son of a bitch. But to see where he started, and I was there when he started, to see now where he is, he's a guy that always, always, without fail, bet on himself. Mm. Always bet on himself. And, you know, he was just, sounds it sounds cheesy, but it, he's, always, he's destined to be in the spot that he's in right now, in the spot that he's in on Sunday, uh, or by the time this airs. Yeah. Whatever the outcome is, like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> when you can't, his thing is finish the story. You can't write a better story. Um, I remember when we were in OVW, we were a tag team, and Dusty, his dad, um, came down. He was doing a little bit of work. Hey, baby, we're gonna we're gonna put you guys together. Young, good looking. You got a little bit of experience. But Cody was very popular. He didn't have much experience. But he was very popular with the fan base. Obviously, he's a pretty guy. Yeah. So putting us together was a really good idea at the time, mm -hmm. and it really helped. But Dusty said, you know, nice baby face tag team, give you a little bit of run, but I just need you to know that Cody is destined to be a single star. <laughs> Told me that way back when. I don't think Cody was in a year. He, but Dust, he knew it. He felt it. And of course, we're talking about arguably one of the greatest of all time. Right. Um, but he's not, people might say, well, that's just the father speaking very highly of his son. Okay. I consider it a prediction because look where his son is now. Yeah. He was always destined to be a single star and I he knows it. Yeah. And there's no one in my mind that is more deserving than that guy. It just seems like he works so hard. Well, you can't say do the work and not do the work. Yeah. Um but he's also a guy that you know he 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 strives to make everybody around him better. Mm. And that is something, as I've sat back and seen a lot of talent that he worked with in AEW, um, it's also a challenge because if you do not keep up with him, he will leave you behind mm. as a lesson, mm. and rightfully so, and I believe that as well. Um, any show you're on, bring your best because I'm going to bring my best, and if you can't keep up, that is not my fault. I will leave you behind yeah. because that we take professional wrestling very seriously. So to see him instill that quality in young talent and to see them up their game and to see them where they are now, the young Sammy Guevara's and Darby Allen's and Jungle Boy's, MJF's, like you can see now that 
when they first started to where they are now, yeah. you can kind of see a lot of his teachings there. Yeah. And I, even I, like, you know, I helped him out a lot. He'll tell you, or he'll tell people that I taught him how to wrestle. He's taught me a hell of a lot in terms of how to be a, um, an absolute professional's professional in it, this industry. It feels like Tony Khan is cut from that same cloth of just like very goal driven and like figuring out a way to get something done. I don't know how he does it. I, I don't, uh, I put it to you this way. I have never seen Tony Khan yawn. Does he sleep? I, I, I've never seen him yawn. So wow. I'm assuming no. Um, uh, he might be half a cyborg, who knows? Uh, but that guy has a, a ton on his plate and just a steel trap of a mind. Remembers everything, every detail. When wow. I first met him, we were having conversations. He's like, oh, I remember that match you had. I, I forgot about it. I, I was like, really? So again, it was in such and such city. I'm like, holy shit. I was like, oh, you're just buttering me up. No, he remembers everything. He's like the rain man of pro wrestling. Yeah. When it comes to like stats and matches and finishes. Mm -hmm. But he's not just like that with wrestling. I've, I've walked into his office and I've seen him. He's got his iPad set. I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for saying this. No, he's got his iPad set up and he's watching like a Jags game and it, or, you know, he's watching a Fulham game and he's, he's, he can multitask like, like no one I've seen before. Wow. Well, in the midst of, putting a card together and getting everything done. And so, I mean, uh, yeah. And, and, and like I was saying before, just a, one of sweetheart of a man gave me all the time in the world when my mom passed. And now that Austin's been born, I had all the time in the world to be home with my wife. Uh, cause it's just us here. Like mm -hmm. just a good man, uh, a busy man, uh, but a good man. Take me back to the night when you became the chairman. No, oh, what did the, what this did came the... up last night too at that FTR thing. <laughs> What, what did the conversation look like when Cody was like, I want you to swing as hard as you can at my head and I'm, I'm just going to take it. Swing for the fences was, um, was the term. I said, okay, get your hands up. And he goes, no. I was like, you get, buddy, you got to put your hands up. Uh, and he goes, no. I was like, oh, damn it. So, uh, and again, it's Cody. I trust him. He trusts me. Uh, and this was supposed to be a gimmick chair. Yeah, it, but it, it's you can you can shave down a chair as much as you want. It, it's not the flat part; it's the lip of the chair yeah. that is always the the most dangerous part, and that's usually the part that catches somebody. And in this case, it was, and it was just a fraction off. Um, on he'll blame, he'll he'll take the rap himself. It was I'm swinging, so it's off. I take the rap for it. Mm. I think it's my fault. Uh, but I, I hit him, and it was a wonderful reaction, and it got the shock value that did. And you hear the term red equals green, and it's, you know, blood is money and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just remember hitting him, listening, and I have a moment. I look at Brandy, and we have a little moment there, and I look back at Cody, and that's when I see the pool. And I just went, oh, shit. And I look at Brandy, and she's kind of looking at Cody, looking, and then she looks at me, and I go, sorry. We have to, I got to get out of here. <laughs> And got to the back and like, I was, I had tears of like, I had tears in my eyes. I was profusely apologizing to her because I felt so bad. I love mm. that guy. Mm. He's like my brother. Um, and then I go to check on him and he's on the table face down and he go, I go, Hey man, look, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? He's like, you are the most unsafe professional wrestler I've ever seen in my life. He starts just <laughs> busting my balls. And I'm like, you can't, you don't understand where I'm at right now, man. I'm having a hard time. He goes, yeah, I'd have a hard time too. I am having a hard time getting stitches put in my head. And I'm just like, oh, this guy. Um, but that, that was the night it got, uh, business-wise, it got a lot of buzz. It set us up for what would happen at All Out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really helped you. You got a moniker out of that. I did. I, I thought we could have um, capitalized on it a, a little bit more. I thought it... Um, you know, when you come into a company like that, starting out, I don't think we had TV at the time. That was the other thing about the- That's right. It the, was like a few months before the TV We'd either started. just gotten it or we were in the works of getting it. I can't remember the exact time, but a lot of people will say to me, do you think the match, you know, with Cody, do you think you should have, you should have won? Like coming in and, you know, do you think that would have propelled you? That's not the match, no. Because this match started on the internet and we did the row twos on YouTube yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And mm -hmm. the big blow off was- um, the match it all out. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in when the good guy and the bad guy are having battles, it's okay for the heel to win a few battles here and there, as long as the baby face wins the war. Mm. That was our baby face winning the war. Mm. 
because we didn't have the three months of television time to kind of bounce back and forth. There would have been five times more promos. There would uh, That's the part that kind of bugs me the most is I wonder what we could have done verbally mm. against one another because, again, he would have forced me to up my game or he would have left me behind. Mm -hmm. So I was looking forward to that aspect of things. We just didn't have the luxury of television time. Yeah. But so, is there someone when you do go back that you're like, man, I can't wait to mix it up with them? Um, there's no one. Uh, this is gonna sound. This doesn't mean I, I don't want to wrestle anybody, but I've had the. I've wrestled almost everybody I've set out to wrestle in yeah. my career in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be a live event when the cameras are off, or on tour somewhere in some city that people have forgotten about or whatnot. I've, I've been very lucky, very fortunate, um, to wrestle a lot of people that I set out to wrestle. Uh. There's no one that that really um, jumps out at me because uh, there's still a lot of things I would like to do yeah. in AEW. Um, but I, I had a blast wrestling as many people as I did there so far. I, 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 uh, maybe Wardlow. I think Wardlow like, but be, in a one-on-one -on -one single give us about 20 minutes yeah. and just let us wrestle. No cage, no, 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 you know, even a cold, I take a cold match with Wardlow. Let's just do it mm. on a, dynamite rampage give me 20 minutes and let us just go yeah because that guy is he he's still untapped mm. i in my opinion he's very untapped he's been decorated he's a two-time tnt champion yep. and stuff like that but you've seen a little bit of his athleticism but he's still untapped on what he can do and i he's I, monster i can pull it out i that think he's a so monster he is massive i'd love to see you guys have a but match. a teddy bear That's sweetheart a of a man one. uh incredible talent incredible human being do you think about how much longer you can do this or how much longer you want to do this? I don't want to do it much longer. Um, not because I, um, uh, I'm being forced out or anything like that. Health-wise, I'm in, I'm in very good shape. I'm, uh, yeah, you look great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. I got to be on camera with you, so I got to kind of keep up. We're not in the up. same shot, though, so it's okay. Just The keep, camera just, cuts between us. But so. don't cut back and forth so damn quick to where people can <laughs> judge size and go, his arms are a little smaller than Van Vliet's. I'm wearing sleeves. Come on. Yeah. I appreciate you. See, you're such a good host. See how you just make no, me comfortable I mean, and go, all right, great. I'll, take the, I'll take the W. You look great. Uh, <laughs> um, I am trying to get in the best shape of my life by the time I turn 40, May 19th. So I think you're well on your way, I'm man. I'm on my way. You're well on your way. I'm you working, got that empty stomach cardio. I'm working with AJ Sims, Cement Factory. Uh -huh. That boy he, knows his stuff. He has dialed in every jacked superstar in WWE and AEW. So, yeah. But I that's think, the key. You just said it. Dialed in. Mm -hmm. Tunnel vision. Focused. Yes. And not, oh, well, I can miss it one day. I can miss it this day. Consistency yeah. is the key. You know how much I miss pizza right now? But how, how much it'll mean to you after May 19th or oh, what I'm gonna the date eat so much pizza. Yeah. I'm going to eat so much Domino's. Yeah. You'll go nuts on it and then you'll go, oh, why did I do that? Yep. And then you'll be sick of it and then yep. you'll get back on the train. Like that's just, but that will, that mentality, yeah. that's what, that's what takes people from here to there. That's like the difference. You, if you look at what Tommaso Ciampa looks like right now or the transformation that EC3 made, mm -hmm. Moose, uh, Apollo Crews, like that's the guy I'm working yeah, with. Yeah, it works. Right. If Johnny you, Gargano you, looks amazing right you're now. You're talking about guys that consistency yep. and to a T. Yeah. You have that same drive, just like them. Just like you. I don't. That's I true. can't get up every morning and do 35, 40 minutes. Of I can't do it. I, I cannot do it. I just, I sit on TikTok while I walk on the treadmill for 35 minutes. I'd rather be in a, uh, around 11 a.m. I'll be in my hot ass gym garage and I'll, I'll go an extra hour instead of getting up. I, I can't, <laughs> I cannot. That's why I, I, I admire bodybuilders. I, the, the drive that you have to have, the consistency, the dedication to that diet. Oh. I, I, I could had die to, tomorrow, man. I'm having a damn donut. You know what I mean? I'm just... I had to buy a treadmill because I was tired of going to the gym twice a day. Because I would go in the morning to do empty stomach cardio, mm -hmm. come back, work, go back in the afternoon to lift weights, and then come back. And I was going to the gym like 12 times a week. That's a commute. Yeah. It's not that far, but it was just... Home gym is a way to go. What man. a waste of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, not a waste if we're getting results. Yeah, but my, not a great usage of my time. Buying a treadmill for $300 was an amazing investment. Game changer. Yeah. Game changer. So anyway, back to you. you you're in great shape. You feel good, but you're saying like your focus is going to be elsewhere in a few years. More or less. I have just kind of one thing left that I want to do in pro wrestling, but I also still want to be- I want Do to we be know able, what it is? Uh, I don't know. I, oh. I don't, I, 
One thing left. You don't need to one, say. One thing. I feel I've done mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I'm. I don't have any false sense of. Uh, I think I'm pretty level headed. Yeah. Um, but I would like to be. Uh, I'd like to win a championship. I'd like to win a championship uh, in a major company, and reason being is uh, one of my favorite photos ever is um, uh, John Humor, uh, John Huber, Brody Lee. Mm-hmm. I get kind of sorry if I stumble a little bit. I get a little uh, when we talk about him. Um, I think it was his second time as a TNT champion. He has a photo where he's holding the title and he has his two sons with him, mm-hmm. and they are just so happy. And they're like, they're like, you know, kids, they're so proud of their parent, but the look on his face, to me anyway, it is almost like he, he knew it. He felt that he knows what this moment means to them and to him. Mm. And I'm not a jealous, I'm not jealous of any other man or human being on this planet. I'm very happy with who I am. I'm very, you, what you see is what you get. I'm very good, but I am jealous of that photo mm. because he has that beautiful moment with his son and that's going to live forever that photo yeah it's gonna live with me forever i want that same thing for me and my son Mm. i want that moment and it would kind of be you know a nice little period at the end of a 20 plus year career um but it would be something that he can hold in his hands and whether he understands it or not he knows that daddy did this for so long and daddy got this yeah okay so if i want a world series ring then I have to go do this or whatever he wants yeah. to do. I just want him to know that there, if you're willing to work hard enough, you put in enough time, there is a prize at the end of the tunnel. If you're willing to go for it and not stop. I just I just think his kids are gonna grow up to be wonderful men. And I believe they're gonna look back at a lot of those photos and they're gonna be like, I, you know, my dad did it. I can do whatever I want to. And I just I know that's a legacy that he's gonna leave with them. And I wanna leave something like that with my son. So I don't know. We all want to be champions, yeah. you know. That's that's kind of in the mold. That's why we get into this. But uh, more so now that I've had him, it's just a stamp to kind of wrap things up. Every interview we do is filled with so much inspiration. You, you know how many times that thing from our last interview or two interviews ago, where you talked about like your twenties is about doing all the figuring out what you don't want to do, mm-hmm. and your thirties is for figuring out what you do want to do. Mm-hmm. That got shared like millions of times. It's it, but it it's it, it's crazy because you don't. Uh, it's so hard to pay attention to when you're young. You're, you you're still trying to find yourself, right? Yeah. But it's so. I have to remind myself of that too. It's like okay, like even now, like up until probably maybe five five six months ago, uh, I totally wiped out like my care or any thought process on Twitter or social media, like everybody's having a lot of trouble and a lot of young kids are having issues with the bullying and how to deal with it and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, you know, and we try, we're people pleasers. We work for an audience. So no matter how hard we work or how much we put ourselves through and then the audience kind of certain people on Twitter, not all of it, but they don't like your performance or they hate how you look or they hate your hair or you're not entertaining. And it's just like, oh, that can weigh down on you after 20 plus years of service. Yeah. And then I saw a quote from the baseball great legend, Tommy Lasorda. And I don't know why, but it said, 80% of people that know your problems don't care. The other 20% are glad you're having them. Mm. And I just went, whoa. That's so good. But you've heard different incar- kind of it's been said to you different ways, but it was said, and I read that, and I just went, that just changed everything, how yeah. I thought about social media and about what people thought about me personally. It just, it completely wiped it away. Mm. It doesn't mean that everybody out there is is an asshole or, or, or everybody is, is, is mean. It just means that everybody's doing their own thing. Yeah. Everybody's trying to catch up in this world. Everybody's chasing down their dream. Everybody's trying to pay the next rent. Everybody's, no one has time for your for your shit or your worries. So if you want to get something done, go get it done yourself because nobody else, nobody cares. And if you're having a hard time, good, because that means that someone's going to go, I can get past them and they're going to go for it. Go get it. Like, so little... That's so good. But things, but you just, you, yeah. you learn this stuff. I, I think it's an age thing, man. I, I don't, I, I think you just, or you watch something like this and then 
Oh, you that know. that's gonna resonate with so many people right there. I hope so because it totally changed my. Rewind perspective. that and watch it again. Okay, <laughs> all right. It just changed my perspective on on on, on, how, on my I, outlook on things like that. Just just wild. So I don't think we were doing this before, but I end every conversation now with gratitude. It's such a big part of my life. I mm -hmm. wake up every day and I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. I do it before I go to sleep, and now we end every conversation with that interview. And as I'm saying this, I noticed you have an Austin tattoo on your bicep. Oh now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look that, at the size of these arms, that, ladies that, and gentlemen. That was there before he was here. So oh, no way. Once I put it on there, we really couldn't change the name. <laughs> I was like, I hope you're, I hope you're sure, because yeah. But what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Uh, my son, my wife. I guess that'd be one of them, right there. Yeah, this guy. Um, oh, my son and my. I, I don't think uh, anything, but so I, I put it to you this way. I don't think, and this is not me downplaying my career or downplaying uh, how people may feel about it or whatnot. I'm just, I don't think my legacy will be titles or WrestleManias or Hall of Fames. I don't think that's in the cards for me. Not because I don't believe it. I just don't think everybody can have that. Mm. I think my legacy will fall under three things, whether or not I was um, a good man, a good husband and father, and whether or not I lived a life worth living. That is what will be my main three things. My son and my wife will benefit the most from that, but they'll be the ones that carry that forward. So I'm, yeah. I'll be grateful if I can be a good man, be a good husband and father, and I feel that I am living a life worth living. Mm. So I'm grateful for that as well. That's so good. I've heard it said like, at the end of every day, you can ask yourself the question, did I live? Did I love? Did I matter? And I feel like that's exactly what you're saying. Lucky guy. Dude, it's so good to see you. Dude, congratulations man. on everything. Congratulations to you. I'm pumped, man. I am so excited. I'm, I'm all of the feelings. I, I, you know what? Uh, they might go on a date. They could grow up. Whoa, on a date. hey. You don't, hey, you don't want to be family? Not to my little girl. I mean, he'll be a gentleman. He'll be a proper young actually, man. Actually, you're right. He'll be half third Canadian. What is he going to be? Half Canadian? This is very confusing. Uh, I, I'm he's Canadian. A, your son is American. He's American. He's full. He, he, yeah. yeah, he's, he's yeah, born he here. He a gentleman. He, he has more rights than I do, I think, right now in this country. All right. 18 years from now, my little girl can go on a date with Austin. He'll be a proper gentleman, and I can go. Hey, you can scare him a little bit if you want to. It's okay. Okay, good. So yeah, you can yeah. you can put the you know, bad boys to it up. <laughs> we can both do. It. Open the door and go. Hey, boy, we can do. We can we can get into it. You know what I'm talking about. You know the I know, scene. I love you that. Can insert scene. a little clip in here right now. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. It's fine. I'll laugh. Just get it on camera so I can see it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Brother, pleasure is always all mine. Thank you.